In this video, we're going to look at the difference between strong and weak acids, and then see how pH is related to the concentration of hydrogen ions. An acid is a substance that forms aqueous solutions with a pH of less than 7. And the reason for this is that they ionize in aqueous solutions to release hydrogen ions, which just means they split or dissociate into their ions. For example, hydrochloric acid actually exists as H plus and Cl minus ions, while nitric acid ionizes into a hydrogen ion and a nitrate ion. And remember, a hydrogen ion is just a hydrogen atom that's lost one electron, so it's actually just a proton. Now, hydrochloric and nitric acid are both examples of strong acids, just like sulfuric acid. And what defines them as strong acids is that they all ionize completely. So all the acid particles will dissociate to release hydrogen ions. Or in other words, the reactants turn completely into products. Weak acids, on the other hand, which include things like ethanoic acid, citric acid, and carbonic acid, don't fully ionize. In their case, only a small portion of the acid particles actually dissociate to release hydrogen ions. This is because the ionization of a weak acid is reversible, which means that there's an equilibrium between the undissociated and dissociated forms of the acid. We can see this in our equation here for the dissociation of ethanoic acid, because it has a double arrow, which shows that the reaction is reversible. We cover reversible reactions properly in another video, but all it means is that as well as the reactants being able to form the products, the products can react to reform the reactants. So basically, the reaction can go both forwards and backwards. Because only a few of the acid particles actually dissociate, we say that the equilibrium lies to the left, which just means that at equilibrium, we'll have far more molecules of undissociated acid than we will molecules of dissociated acid. Now, it's really important that you don't confuse an acid strength with its concentration. Being strong or weak is all about how much an acid dissociates so what proportion of the acid molecules ionize in water. However, concentration is a measure of how much acid there is in a certain volume, with more concentrated solutions containing more acid per unit of volume. So it's possible to get strong acids, like hydrochloric acid, at both high and low concentrations. Just like a weak acid could also be either concentrated or dilute. The last thing we need to cover is pH, which is just a measure of the concentration of hydrogen ions in the solution. The weird thing though is that as the concentration of hydrogen ions gets higher, the pH gets lower. In fact, each decrease of 1 on the pH scale represents the concentration of hydrogen ions increasing by a factor of 10. So if we moved from pH 5 to pH 3, the hydrogen ion concentration would increase by 10 times and then 10 times again. So it would be 100 times higher in total. Or if we moved from pH 8 to 11, the hydrogen ion concentration would decrease by a factor of 10 three times. So it would be 1,000 times lower. So putting all of this together, to get a very acidic solution that has a low pH, we'd need a high concentration of hydrogen ions. If we had a strong acid, like hydrochloric acid, we could achieve this low pH at most concentrations, because each particle dissociates fully, and so overall, we'd have loads of hydrogen ions being released. On the other hand, if we had a weak acid, like carbonic acid, then to get a low pH, it would have to be really concentrated, because so few of the acid particles would actually ionize and release their hydrogen ions. Another way of putting this concept is that at any given concentration, a strong acid will always have a lower pH than a weak acid, because a higher proportion of the strong acid molecules will dissociate to release their hydrogen ions, and it's only the concentration of hydrogen ions that determines the pH. 
If you haven't heard yet, you can find all of our videos on our website, cognito.org. You'll also find questions, flashcards, exam style questions, and past papers. And we track all of your progress so that you always know what to study next. So sign up for free by clicking here or browse our playlist here on YouTube.